All right, so we're going to do one more video on partial derivatives. And this one is more concerned with interpretation of partial derivatives. Um, so we, we talked a little bit about where the limit definition for partial derivatives comes from in the, in the last video, right? So we, we have these, uh, these limit definitions, right? So we say, well, the, the partial derivative of a function with respect to x, it looks like the limit as h goes to 0, f of x plus h and y minus f of x, y all over h, and the partial derivative with respect to y is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x and then y plus h minus f of x, y over h, right? Um, so in the x derivative, you hold y constant, well, x varies. In the y derivative, you hold x constant, well, y varies, okay? Uh, there are other notations that you'll encounter. Um, you'll probably find another very common one is this would be df, so use this curly d for the partial derivative with respect to x and partial derivative with respect to y. You'll see that notation as well. Um, of course, if you have three or more variables, there are analogous definitions for, let's say, the z partial derivative. You're just going to have x, y, z in here. So there'll be one where you have a z plus h, uh, right, where you hold x and y constant. Uh, and if you have a, a vector-valued function, so if, this, uh, if your function is taking values in r2 or r3 or higher, um, you just do these component-wise, right? So you do the first, second, third component, just like you do for vector-valued functions of one variable. Uh, but there, there remains this question of what these actually are, are telling you. What kind of information are they giving you? And, of course, you have, you have some notion of derivatives as, as a rate of change from Calc 1, right? So derivative is telling you, you know, you know as, as you vary x, sort of what is the corresponding change in y, right? How fast is y changing with respect to a particular change in x? Um, and... Partial derivatives also measure rates of change. It's just that they are measuring rates of change in a particular direction, right? So the, the kind of the general picture that you have in mind here is something like this. So here's our, uh, our coordinate axes. Here's x. Here's y. Here's z. Okay. And... We've got the graph of some function sitting here. So maybe let's just draw something like this. So here's y, or sorry, not y, um, z, right? z equals f of x, y, okay? So there's our graph, and we might be interested in, in you know, a particular point on this graph. So we might have down here in the plane, we might have some point, say, AB. Now, I want to think of the point AB kind of going into the function, but if I, want, if I want to draw this in R3, let's just say the Z coordinate is 0. And then up here on our graph, we have a point A. B and Z is equal to F of AB, All right? Okay, so what's going on with the partial derivatives? Well, <coughs> one way to think about the, the partial derivative with respect to X, what you're really doing here, uh, right, is you're, you're approaching a particular point, so maybe we, we take X and Y to be A and B in this context. You're you're fixing a y value and you're approaching along a line which is parallel to the x-axis. So you have somewhere over here, right, you have the point um, 0, b, 0. And you have this line 
parallel to the x-axis going through the point AB0. Right? So we could, um, we could think of this point as, as a set of all points of the form, I guess uh, x could be some t value, y is fixed at b, z is, is fixed at 0. Right? Um, we could do it that way. Or, or maybe if we, if we really want to focus on this point AB as being the kind of origin point for this story, maybe we think of this as A plus T. So then this point here, you know, is where T happens to be equal to zero. Okay? But of course, you could also do that in the other direction. We could go, we could go this way. We could take the point over here, um, A0, 0, 0. And we could let y vary. And we generate the line through this point, right? So this would be the line where you have x is fixed at A, y is B plus some t value, z is 0. Uh, and of course, these. Um, these two lines in the plane, right, if you think of these as just parametric curves, um, you can generate some new parametric curves. You could generate, say, the curve, let's say, um, let's do R and S. Um, well, I've done S first. Uh, R of T. And R of T is going to be what we get when we hold Y fix and we vary x. So we get a plus t, b, and then f of a plus t, b, for the z-coordinate. Um, and where is r of t in this picture? Well, it's basically just what happens when I take this line and I lift it up to my surface, to my graph. So it's something like that, right? So this is R of T, okay? But then I could do the same thing going the other way, so I can consider S of T, right? So I could do A, B plus T, and then F of A, B plus T. And what does that give me? Well, that gives me the sort of the lift of this blue line. So it gives me something like this. Curve going through that way. Okay? So this would be my uh, my my S of T here. Okay, and they both pass through this particular point. <coughs> Alright. Now each of those those curves, you know, we can we can talk about tangent lines to those curves. In fact we know we know how to get tangents to those curves. We know how to get tangent vectors because we know that we can calculate, you know, R prime. We can calculate S prime. And, and you'll notice that when you calculate R prime of T, what you're going to get is you're going to get 1. And I guess we should think of this as a vector, right? 1, 0. And well, this is just going to be, what is this? If we take the derivative of this thing with respect to t, um, and, and we're interested in, I guess, at, uh, actually not generally r prime of t, we actually want r prime at 0, right? Because t equals 0 corresponds to this point that we're interested in. Um, so what, what do we get if we take the derivative um, at 0? Well, what we get is we get the x partial derivative, right? Um, similarly, if we do s prime at 0, we get 0, 1, and we get the y partial derivative. Okay? All right, so why, why do I get these partial derivatives? Well, just think about, you know, what's going on there. If I'm, if I'm calculating the derivative of this with respect to t, I'm taking the limit as t goes to 0 of f of a plus t and b minus f of a b over t, right? It's exactly this, except x and y are now a and b, and instead of h, I'm using a t, right? But it's, it's exactly the same thing. So it is, it is this partial derivative at a, b, um, with respect to x, and then with respect to y. Uh, 
So then you get those, those vectors, and they're, they're up here somewhere, right? So maybe, um, here, and, and here, you have those two tangents to those curves, right? Um, and and you, can, you can think of those tangent vectors as giving you slopes as well. You can think of this one here, which, which corresponds to this, uh, this guy here, so partial derivative with respect to x. Um, that's sort of measuring slope in the xz plane, right? So it's sort of giving you the rate um, at which z is changing with respect to x. This one is giving you slope in the yz plane, right? So it's telling you how y is changing with respect to z, or sorry, how z is changing with respect to y. Um, there's one more thing that you can do, right? In, um, we know that if we were doing calc 1, we wouldn't just write a tangent vector, we would write tangent lines, right? So we'd have the line parallel to that vector, we'd have the line parallel to that vector, and we would have these tangents, right? Now those are lines in space, and it's two intersecting lines in space, and one of the things that you might recall from linear algebra is that if you have two intersecting lines in space, what you actually get is a plane, right? So we actually get a plane that's sort of resting on our surface at that point. And, and naturally enough, this is called our tangent plane, right? How do we describe that tangent plane if we were interested in describing a, a plane? into this, uh, you know, that sits on this surface in space. Well, remember from linear algebra that to describe a plane in space, you need two things. You need a point on the plane. We've got one. And the other thing that you need is a normal vector, right? You need a normal to the plane. So what is that normal vector? Well, we have two vectors which are parallel to the plane. So remember from linear algebra that one of the ways you can get a normal vector is with a cross product. So we can do r prime at 0, take the cross product with s prime at 0, and, and work out what you get. And um, I believe what you should get if we, uh, if we tried to do this is we should get, what, we should get something like, well, the way I've set it up, I think what you get is minus the x derivative minus the y derivative, and then 1. Um, and I guess that makes sense if we want the normal vector pointing up, the z component should be a 1. Um, a lot of times you'll see it written the other way around with, uh, you know, because you could choose the downward pointing normal vector as well, so plus, plus, minus, that also gives you a normal. Um, so this is one way about thinking of partial derivatives, they're telling you about slopes, but they're telling you about slopes in certain directions, and you can use them to get this notion of a tangent plane. You can find the normal vector. From the normal vector, you can write down the equation of the plane. And once again, this is something that we'll look at examples for in class. Uh, one of the, uh, and just before we leave this, it's getting a little bit long. Um, one of the ways to talk about what it means for a function to be differentiable, if you have more than one variable, um, Right, just like in one variable, differentiability means you have a good tangent line approximation. For two variables, you can say that differentiability means having a good tangent plane approximation at every point. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll look into exactly what that means and how do you actually get these tangent plane approximations. Um, turns out there, there are some tricky details there, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that in another video and another class.